Are Asian inspired bakeries the future? Could it be more popular than boba? And could it be so popular Asian flavors just take over bakeries in general? Yeah, we got to talk about this because if you guys have been following Asian American food trends at all over the past one, two, three, five years, you know that this is the hottest trend in Asian America, Andrew. We're talking about French pastries and Asian flavors and Asian themes mixed together. Two things that used to stay completely separate. Oh, I'm over in my zone. Yeah, I'm over in my zone. And then they're coming together to create just a whole new genre. I'm talking about a hundred Asian American pastry shops opening up between Canada and America over the past five years. I mean, matcha tarts, ube tarts, yuzu tarts, petite chos with hoji cha cream inside, guys. Now, also, we want to note that even some Western-style French bakeries are maybe starting to incorporate a little bit more Asian flavors, like maybe a matcha croissant in there or two. So, guys, let me tell you this. This is reaching non-Asians. This is not just a trend amongst Asian Americans. You're saying this is not only an ASEAN enclave. I think this is an industry trend, and a lot of the chains are coming from Asia. But anyways, guys, we're going to talk about why this trend is so popular, why Asians love baking so much, and is it going to continue and just impact the world because maybe Asian flavors are taking over period so please hit that like button check out other episodes of the hot pop boys oh. as we get into some food talk okay so the founder of subtle asian baking andrew which was an offshoot of subtle asian traits starting in about 2018 2019 she just gave a big interview and the article's kind of going viral in the asian baking world where she's sort of talking about how she spearheaded the digital movement to highlight this uh this mix between the east and the west that previously right. was not seen before yeah well let's talk about david first we got to give some reasons why Asian bakery items are so big right now. And we're not just talking about your old school Hong Kong style bakeries where you can get your, uh, you know, your cha shu bao and, you know, your dan tot, stuff like right, that, right, which right. are classic. You're, we're talking about, we're not talking about the mixing from the colonial British days right. of Asia. We're talking about more mm -hmm. like modern day, modern French pastries being mixed with modern Asian flavors. So why is this so popular? Why is it trending and why could it take over? Number one, I think that this is popular because it allows people to be way better than their mom, way better than their dad, way better at their grandparents than something. They get a spearhead something because um, obviously older Asian people, generally they are not that well versed in the French pastry game. Yeah. Right? No. But, the, yeah. but then they're not necessarily as pan-Asian either as the Asian Americans. So the Asian Americans are pulling from like all around Asia plus all around Europe and converging it. Using my newly acquired French techniques, I can right. wield the power of all of Asia. Right, but America's in there too, you know, brownies yeah. and cookies and more like For what sure. we call American type foods. Um, number two, Andrew, do you think it is easier to spread culture and it's more accessible to spread it through sweet things than through savory things? Yes, first of all, I think when you make yuzu, ube, matcha, when you make these things into cream, I mean, how many people are gonna say no, to be honest? But if you're like, oh, do you wanna drink a cup of hoji cha? People are like, I don't know what that is. But hey, guys, this is hoji cha cream inside of a cream puff. Do you wanna try it? They're like, all right. Yeah, I also think that it's just easier to work with baked sweet items than it oh, yeah. is raw meats and all these exactly. uh, perishable items I mean, in the savory wor let, world game. Let's be honest, guys. Any type of weird food that Asians have, it's usually not the cold food. It is usually the hot savory foods. Durian though, durian is the yeah, exception. Yeah, yeah. Number three, Andrew, I think it's very Asian American. So it allows us to separate ourselves from chains from Asia as well, because they've always had, you know, France or, you know, the Portuguese, they went to Japan in like the 1400s. There's always been some mix, you know, Castella cake, tiramisu, but this gets to feel very, very Asian American. Mm, yeah. I mean, are you talking about kind of like how Koreans did Paris Baguette and Tout Le Jour, or also how Taiwanese people did 85C, which are all very popular. And they are like inspired, well, obviously Paris Baguette, that's supposed to be more French, but 85C, for example, is kind of like your next level Chinese bakery, Yeah, right? Yeah, but I but think it's- it's too, it's, but, it's very Asia, Asia. But this is like the next generation. Right. This is a that. lot of like Hokkaido milk bread, Azuki, Ube. If you do Ube, I would say that's very Asian American because it's very Asian, pan Asian American to incorporate Ube from the Philippines. Yeah, shout out to the Filipinos. Uh, point number five, Andrew, I think it's actually open for anybody. And it's really anybody who can think outside of the box because the startup costs are not as high as like opening up a restaurant. Yeah. And, and I, I think it's funny, like you were saying, like I think a lot of Asians, they're not going to necessarily out stir fry 
their parents. You know, like parents, they just, stir frying is just one of those, working around a hot walk is just one of those skills that like- It's just, hard to be uncle, bro. No, it's just, hard to be uncle. Just an immigrant wants to do that. But I'm saying now that you, you you're, you're dressed, you're, you're trained or inspired by the, you know, the French bakeries, right. patisserie, like you get to, you know, do that now. Right, right. The uncle doesn't necessarily have the cuteology skills that you need. No, no. They don't know the, the little cream, the... Point number six, Andrew, I think that people were really looking for the next thing after Boba. Yeah. Do you agree with this? There, I remember so many articles. People thought for a second it was going to be, you know, Mango Sago from Hong Kong. That definitely didn't take after Boba. Literally, Boba's been popular for, what, 10, 20 years? Mm. I think people were waiting for what was the next evolution that was going to be the next food trend to emerge from, like, Asians born in America. Yeah, I think, um, I think a lot of people look at Boba as uh, it's just a drink and it's very heavy. But once you fuse it with the French techniques and i think one of the reasons is asians love french culture and french techniques uh because it's very clean and very uh high high skill and level. it's almost like they were exposed to french culture in asia andrew before they were even exposed to british anglo culture oh that's a good point yeah yeah, yeah. um and point number seven andrew like you said it's very cute and a lot of asians who are homebodies they get to like show their dominance of the kitchen dude do you, have you ever seen an inside the oven footage of bread rising and baking in an oven it honestly Looks cute because they just turn from this little ball and then it just expands and becomes this nice, perfectly round, yeasty, so soft, fluffy thing. You're saying whole cute, whole fluffy. It's so whole yummy, cute. Yes, you can make them into bears and Totoro <laughs> and all this pandas. Um, moving on to the bad side, or I guess just uh, things that are not as good about it, I guess. Number one, Andrew, it can be unhealthy because a lot of baked goods, what they use a lot of what? Shortening. They use a lot butter. of butter. Um, would you say... I mean, I guess a bodybuilder would be like, yeah, bro, there's a lot of like empty calories in there. Yeah, for sure. I mean, it's definitely a dessert, a luxury, a luxury thing. It is definitely some calories. I mean, I feel like French people, if they're not considered overweight, it's because they might eat like one croissant a day and that's like half of the calories they right, consume. Right, right. You're saying you're going to be hitting up high on your calorie metrics, high on your carbohydrates yeah. metrics, but probably not on your protein. Yeah, I'm and not it, it might not leave you feeling that full either. Guys, let's be real. If you eat rice every day at home with your Asian family and then you go eat croissants, like matcha croissants with yuzu cream, I'm like, yeah, you're packing on a lot of cows. Um, point number two, I think that, to be honest, savory foods more so represent the culture okay. even more than sweet foods. This, That's fair. I mean, some people yes. are going to be offended by this. No, but it's true because, listen, you're just taking yuzu, the fruit, and then just making it at a cream and then putting it into a croissant. That technically is not that Asian aside from the yuzu aspect. But yes, obviously the fish sauces, the chilies, the gochujangs, the, uh, you know. You mean the things that just grew, that are, grew from the earth in Asia, right? That is very Asian, yeah. Point number three, Andrew, not all of the fusion baked items are necessarily good or thoughtful, even though it's cool that they exist. I mean, I do think a lot of people are like making pandan everything. A lot of people are making ube everything. A lot of people are making uzu, uh, yuzu everything. I think those are cool. I love trying them. But yes, obviously some are more complex and thought out than others. Yeah, I think the biggest thing with pandan is sometimes you don't have enough pandan flavor because the amount you need to extract to flavor something is like tremendous. But, but you and, know and like, what takes some thought, David? is some durian. If you're going to use durian, you got to make it good. Oh my goodness, you can mess that up so easy, but but it's fire when it works out. Point number four, Andrew, sometimes something that Asian Americans like and Americans like means that Asian Asians won't like it. Mm, so you're saying like uh, a lot of these like Asian inspired bakeries, you're saying a lot of like the internationals or the immigrants. I think the older immigrants can't really get into it, but I think the younger ones who are like the international students, I think they like that stuff. And obviously, uh, obviously it depends on how you fuse your items. If you make a matcha brownie and you cover it in like chocolate, deep fudge, Nutella, and then you put more powdered sugar on it, that's going to be too sweet for most people from Asia, I, even young people from Asia. I mean, honestly, I think I... I would find it hard to find anybody in the world that doesn't enjoy a croissant. Yeah, because croissants are not that sweet, to be yeah, honest. Literally, that, but true. like, literally, that is just a form that is just unanimously delicious. Point number five, Andrew, is there too much emphasis on sweet things? Because let's say, for example, Asian fusion bakeries, Asian French bakeries or whatever is the next big wave, as, long as, uh, as well as Asian gelatos and Asian ice creams, Asian soft serve. Uh, if we just go from boba to Asian sauce serve, from Thai rolled ice cream all the way to Asian French pastries, does that mean that all Asian Americans are capable of producing that is liked by everybody? It's just sweet things? Yeah, we're soft. 
That's what it would mean. It would mean that Asians are soft. Yeah. Eight, no, <laughs> I mean, I'm half joking, but like, yeah, obviously, like, I love sweet things, but, you know, sweet, fluffy, cute things, boba and all these fluffy croissants and the bows and, and stuff. I mean, yeah, I mean, uh, it, it, it's cute, soft stuff, to be honest. Point number six, Andrew, is the market big enough to support this many second gen fusion shops? Um, you know, no, I, I mean, short answer is, David, no. Some of them are going to close down. We already know some that didn't make it. Uh, I know some that probably are not going to continue to make it. New York is a very competitive place, obviously, and a high rent. It's very hard right, to operate Right, and anytime here. a trend booms, right, it kind of uh, blows Contracts. up, and then there is contraction. Yeah, right? I mean, a lot of people are going to try a lot of things, David, and they may fail or they'll have to switch out those items, but they might pivot and adjust. It is what it is. It is what it is, I, but I'm looking forward to people trying. And last but not least, Andrew, some people say that the Asian flavors and the cool look of everything don't live up to the visuals. They say that the whip is frothy, the flavors are too light. Obviously, because Asians have, typically have a culture of like, not too sweet, not too sweet. We don't want things yeah. as sweet as Europeans yeah. do, right? So I guess, is that going to, is that an issue? Like, uh, yeah, but I think, again, that's going to be of the trial and error. Like, to be honest, like, a lot of the stuff, like, you eat with your eyes first nowadays, you know, in 2023, your camera eats first, blah, blah, blah. It's got to look great. But then you bite into it, and a lot of it is underwhelming. But that's where all the trial and error from the chefs come into play. So, yes, not everything using French techniques is great. Oh, uh, what do you think about Cat Liu's uh, perspective that as a lot of non-Asian bakeries or bakery teams where there's like one Asian and five non-Asian people begin to incorporate more Asian influences, what, how, how respectful should people be of the terminology yeah. and the language? Or, or even how respectful should an Asian be about another Asian culture? So for example, Cat was saying like, hey, you know, I try to be respectful. Like if there's a, uh, if it's if you call something tonkatsu like ramen, like it has to have pork because that's what it means. That's literally what that word means. If you call something a uh, bun mi bowl and you want to make something bun mi flavored, it should have bread because bun is literally means bread. You know. Uh, so basically, you have some accuracy and have some respect for the the items that you're inspired yeah, by not, or referencing. Not just call it like another Asian word just because. You know, obviously, if it's ube, it should be ube flavored. I think that's pretty obvious. But I think if people are like, oh, this is a uh, 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 Japanese something, something, like it should be respectfully something Japanese or like a dango should actually be the the A the dango, not just a thing on a stick, right? Right, right. So I think that... Yes, as Asians, I do think we have a little bit more of a responsibility to be more precise, accurate, and sensitive to other Asian cultures. Not to say that we don't respect other cultures, and you can't just take a, a French thing and just make some, oh, this is a croissant, and it's not a croissant, because that's not gonna make sense either. Guys, please let us know in the comment section below what do you guys think of these new Asian fusion pastry shops? Do you have one in your city? Like I said, there's probably been a hundred of them that open up in North America between America and Canada over the years. I think a lot of them are in the Bay Area. A lot of them are in NYC. A lot are in LA. But I've started to see other cities like Seattle, Houston, mm -hmm. Philly, Boston start to get them as well. Oh, they, oh, they will come to your city if there are Asians there. Some Asian will learn how to bake. Yeah. I mean, if not trained at a French uh, culinary school, they, they're a home chef. I've had some amazing Asian ube and pandan cupcakes from a Vietnamese woman who literally was baking them in her house and then sold them to a full shop in 626. So oh, man. Those were great. Um, Yeah, I remember back in the day, Andrew, New York was all about Magnolia's cupcakes, Andrew, what, Beard Papa's, which was from Japan, Junior's Cheesecake, mm. and then it sort of shifted, Andrew, to Rainbow Bagels, Cronuts, Levain, you know, Martha's Country Bakery. Then the Japanese concepts came like the Mochi Donuts and the Taiyaki, as well as some of the Asian chains, Tula Jours, et cetera. But really, Andrew, now we have entered the true fusion zone. So we're just gonna go over some of them and pop up some photos, Andrew. Cora is Filipino baked sweets. And I'm telling you, Andrew, they're really focusing on ube everything. They got like a quadruple ube donut. Oh, ride so, the ube wave, man. I love ube. Uh, there's this place in Flushing called Gungan, Andrew, mm -hmm. and they focus on some really freaky looking desserts. Like that's their thing. They want their pastries to look out of this world and unlike anything you've ever seen before in your life. Yeah, you know, we know that people like to eat with their eyes first. So we just want to give them something monstrous to look at uh shout out to spot dessert bar oh, Andrew. Yeah. They, they sort of were one of the originators of mixing 
what, like, you know, high-end 10, 20, $30 desserts with Asian flavors. Yeah, no, no. Shout out to them, man. They got a lot of locations, and they do an amazing job. Um, Ceremonia is a Filipino one in Brooklyn. Mm-hmm. And, and they, like, you know some of these places, Andrew? They look more like Western items, but then it's matcha green or ube purple. But then some of these, they almost look like something you've never seen before. Exactly. Ceremonia is more going for something that you've seen, but with Asian flavors. Mm. Bananas. Andrew, this is Asian-infused. Fire. Pudding. Fire. Pondon by Lauren. Uh, I believe Lauren also, she did a pop-up during the COVID, and she was serving out of her her little apartment during yeah. COVID, and now it's a whole spot. Bon Bay, this is uh, via desserts mm. in Brooklyn, of course. They're sort of uh, modernizing it, but keeping it a little bit more traditional. Lady Wong, Andrew, is uh, Malaysian Chinese. They've got traditional kueh which is from, you know, the Pernikins, but they've also got, like, just, like, some some new items. This is Ronnie Chang's favorite dessert in the world, I think. Um, Lisi. Lisi is a uh, super famous. Bro, cri- Lisi sells out, man. I, I pulled up to Lisi twice. I still have not gotten in. I, they sell out in probably, like, their first wave, like, in, in two hours Dude, or something. Dude, I have not seen this many yappies pressed to get something. I saw people, like, sweating bullets. They're like, oh, my girlfriend really wanted these. Oh, they're knocking on the door, shaking it. Um, Yappy problems. 75 degrees, Andrew, is Chinese-owned. And you know what they really love there, Andrew? They love no. the things. And this is controversial. That are shaped like other things, like shaped like animals, right? Whether we're talking about cute little teddy bears, cute little uh, Frenchies, or Goudet Tama. Do you support making delicious things in the shape of cute animals and then eating them? Okay, Uh, I feel torn about it because I definitely know that Western people frown on it, but uh, I'm okay with it. It seems fun. It seems fun. Yeah, some of them look pretty realistic. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't know. Hopefully, we can move past that phase. Uh, Andrew, Ali Mama does boba cream puffs that are actually filled with actual boba pearls. Delicious. Um, Patisserie Tomoko, Andrew, is really, really Mm high-end. Japanese, French things. You know, I think that actually some of the chefs are from Japan. Takahachi is also a chain from Japan. They do this matcha crepe burrito. Harb Soho. Yeah, very good. This is from Tokyo as well. Bibble and Sip. Also sort of uh, cartoonish, yeah. almost anime inspired. Shout out. There's also Bao Tea House that's down here. There's ter- Terms of Endearment. Oh, they do, Andrew. A matcha croissant filled with matcha. Uh, over in K-Town, you got Gray Street Bakery. Very big. You can chill out. It's pretty. It's matcha cool beignets. Oh, you got Purple Dough. We actually went here. This is over in Queens. It's very good. Ando Patisserie. This is a new Kind of like international student-led one. What, Fujinese, Taiwanese, right? Yeah, yeah, but they're doing some really cool, What, what do you think about this? Because, Andrew, they use a lot of ro sung. Yeah. Like, they use a lot of pork floss in their, you know, dessert items, which really would appeal to people in Asia. But as far as America goes, people are looking at that like, hey, honey, what's going on here? Yeah, I think the pork floss is going to be a niche thing for acquired people. But, I mean, I, I don't know. Pink Lady Cheese starts over in Chinatown. You got Spongy's Cafe, Cam Hing, the Classics. Of the uh, little uh, Chinese, the Canto sponge cake. Do you like two Le Jours better or Paris Baguette for yourself? Oh, for, the, the two, for the major Korean between chains, the two, obviously. Between the two, between the two, I, I like two Le Jours. Yeah, uh, Butter Dose is Taiwanese owned. It's delicious. They do a uh, Goma black sesame mm-hmm. cream puff, Andrew. Taidama does matcha shortbread. This is actually my favorite shortbread in the world. Like matcha shortbread. If you do a good matcha shortbread cookie, that's what I want. Interesting. Uh, multi-sweet, Andrew. What do you think about these chains? Uh, th- this from Hangzhou, I believe. And uh, they're also doing a lot of stuff with pork floss. Mm-hmm. Um, Lady M Cakes, Andrew, is a huge international chain. Originally started in New York City wow. by a Japanese woman named Emi Wada. Guys, Dominic Ansel. Now, he is not Asian himself. His wife is actually Asian. But I do think Dominic Ansel is incorporating a few more... Asian flavors into his bakery. You know why? Because he has a Dominic Ansel in Hong Kong that does a ton of Asian flavors. But what they realized is they started bringing some of the recipes from Hong Kong to the New York location. Fire. Shout out to the VLT cake. Fire. Haven Cafe in Chinatown, Andrew, they do a uh, scallion pancake bagel mm-hmm. that is based off a of Tsung Yao Bang. Uh, Tsung Yao Bang. And they do dragon fruit lemon squares. And Burrow is a Japanese cafe where they put grapes and cakes, obviously influenced by the Japanese fruit sun. Mm. Um, and taste cream does mango sago, you know, and French triple layered cakes. But then, so on top, Andrew, it's like HK desserts, but the, you know, the bottom 
part of French. Yeah, hit him up over in uh, Long Island City. Uh, all right, man, David, that was just, a, I, th I think that's, you hit a lot of the main ones around New York, but obviously there's a bunch in LA, there's a bunch in Seattle and the Bay Area. I, I think there's up. some opening like every month. Yeah, I think, David, all right, real quick, before we go, though, I want to ask one question. Who does this trend help and who does this trend potentially hurt? Now, with the trend of new Asian bakeries, is the market just expanding? Is the pie growing for all of the thirst and the hunger for these items? Or is it going to replace possibly some other bakeries, whether it's the Cantonese, like the old school Cantonese Taiwanese bakeries or the... Or the American well, well, I do think that it eats a pretty sizable chunk out of the old school bakeries that our parents and our grandparents went to with the fruit melon wedding Asian cakes. Yeah, Those are delicious, but at the end of the day, I'd rather have them be replaced by something than have them go away and have them replaced by nothing. Oh. Like, Because at the end of the day, I just don't know how much Asian Americans were trying to eat the same things that their grandparents ate. Because of course our taste buds are a little bit more westernized or Europeanized because so much of America's baking heritage was from Europe. You know what I mean? With the chocolates and things like that. That's a good um, point, man. Also, I will say this, Andrew. I think Hong Kong with the, you know, like the, in, in Malaysia, they were doing like all the um, fusion mooncakes. That was like sort of the beginning where you're starting to take an, an old school Asian item and modernize it. Yeah. Well, so I that's almost something I'm more interested in as well, because right now we're talking about the fusion between French pastries and Asian flavors. What about modernizing some of the old school desserts like uh -huh. a moon cake? Well, you guys let us know in the comments down below what you think about this new trend. What is your favorite Asian bakery? Uh, shout it out in the comments down below. There are a ton out there. Obviously, like... Man, I just think a lot of Asians go into baking and they love baking and they they train in the baking schools. Andrew, Fusion Marta box from Indonesia. That is up next. And I see I I've seen those coming. So everybody, thank you so much for watching. That is our Asian food talk, the hot pop boys, Asian bakeries. They're taking over the game. Let us know what is your favorite Asian fusion bakery in North America in the comments section below or around the world, whatever country you're in. And until next time with the Hot Pop Boys, we out. Peace. I love the Asian bakeries. They're so cute. <laughs>